Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm professor of management information system at Martin Vismuk School of Business Economics at CSU Channel Island. In this series of lecture, we're going to talk about enterprise resource planning and CRM.、Uh, in this first installment of the lecture, I'm going to focus on ERP to describe what it is, what kind of a benefit the ERP may bring to us. So let's get started.、Uh, this diagram show the total market size of ERP software and also the major vendor in this space.、Uh, as you can tell, the the number one ERP vendor is SAP, counts for about a quarter of the market share. And followed by Oracle, and a few other smaller vendor.、Uh, and by the way, this Yongyou is actually a Chinese ERP firm, which is quite well known in China, but but lesser known certainly in the Western world. And the total market size is about twenty twenty four point five billion dollar. The the growth is not a hyper growth segment nowadays. And just for for your interest,、uh, let's look at、um, from the Fortune magazine's website. You can find out、uh, the global two thousand, and then if you choose software and programming, then you will find out the top software firm uh, globally. Um, you probably can see a pattern here. The pattern here is that other than SAP. Uh, which is number three,、uh, based on I guess based on sales,、um, is from Germany. All the other top software firm、uh, here, top eight,、uh, seven of them、uh, are from United States. So U.S. certainly has a、um, leading. It's kind of a leading、uh, country in terms of the software industry. Uh, German has a strong manufacturing background, and ERP、um, is rooted actually in the manufacturing industry. And so,、um, German、um, software programmer are、uh, pretty、um, detailed, thorough, and patient、uh, to analyze complex、uh, manufacturing. Activity procedures and the rule which need to be followed.、Uh, so it's probably not a total surprise that the German SAP is the leading ERP vendor、um, in the whole world. But if you look at the the sales here for SAP, it's it's actually close to that. Twenty-four point five billion for the ERP market size.、Um, I believe the difference may be due to、uh, a SAP probably generate a lot of the revenue from consulting and and other、um, activity.、Uh, software sales may be、um, uh, less than fifty percent of.、Um, Of the sales of their total sales,、uh, that that's why there's a difference. Implementing ERP is is a major investment.、Uh, the cost is, relatively speaking, between fifty thousand to can be up to a hundred、um, million dollars. We're talking about millions, and. There's a variety of reason for company to implement ERP.、Um, for instance, to just replace a legacy system.、Uh, this was、uh, particular、um, popular reason、um, during late ninety、uh, uh, when the Y two K problem was.、Um, Was frightened a lot of firms. The Y two K problem came because of the 
year 2000, um, a lot of older system store year was two digit. And once it turned to 2000, a lot of system would actually make the assumption that it was uh, year uh, 1900 instead of 2000. So replacing legacy system, take care of the Y2K problem was a were, were major driver for the adoption of ERP system uh, during that period of time. Other benefit may include reduced process business process cycle time, lowering operating cost, and also um, the integrated uh, nature of such system will enable uh, us to get access to more timely uh, information to make better uh, decision. So what's unique about ERP? Um, comparing to traditional software package, we, we do have a uh, software package since the mainframe era. Uh, the kind of the new ERP packages, um, first of all, they are enterprise-wide application packages. And also, uh, they tend to have uh, a little bit more flexibility to, to allow us to kind of customize it uh, to, for different company. Uh, the degree of customization, the flexibility for us to customize it seems to be um, easier uh, comparing to the older generation of so-called packages. And ERP help us to manage various business functions um, and processes. Um, and, and those are implemented um, via various um, modules. And we can implement um, ERP system um, one module at a time. Uh, the module may cover supply chain, uh, order receiving, inventory, customers order, production planning, shipping, accounting, HR, etc. And when you implement more than one module, then you're going to not only be able to automate some of the business process, but it allow you to start integrate various business processes supported by um, this modules. And the integration came actually from um, the data and information sharing um, uh, based on a shared database which allowed us to integrate the business processes. And also, um, by implementing ERP system, um, at least um, potentially you, you will be adopting and implementing the best practice that um, has been incorporated in various ERP systems. Uh, we'll come back and talk about this issue about best practice concept um, in ERP. So, um, historically, uh, the package software package uh, started with uh, IBM mainframe era that um, they were software packages. Um, that's available to help us to run inventory, uh, manage inventory. Uh, in the late 70s, uh, the MRP, which is material requirements, planning, um, system emerge which allowed us to look at our production schedule and then calculate the, all the parts and material that we may need and, and such that the purchasing department can, um, can be informed to issue purchase order. In the 80, MRP2 uh, started to emerge, which add financial accounting um, system into into the traditional MRP environment, and in the 90s, um, 
we start to incorporate some of the manufacturing execution, the shop floor management function into MRP system. During late 90s, um, MRP2 um, start to uh, incorporating supply chain management function, etc. And, and we start to refer to this type of package ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Here's just a, a number of um, software vendors supporting um, providing ERP solution. Um, we mentioned SAP, the German firm. They do have an offering called SAP Business One, which is for small, medium-sized business. SAP usually is for large company, um, but SAP Business One um, is, is actually a different software uh, they acquire from an Israel software firm called just uh, and rename it called uh, SAP Business One. Oracle's ERP solution is called eBusiness Suite, which actually covers supply chain management and CRM. Oracle also uh, acquired um, PeopleSoft. Uh, PeopleSoft, uh, by its name, you know it's actually very strong in HR function, but it's, a, it's more than that. Our Channel Islands, uh, CSU Channel Islands uh, student record system is a call CI record uh, is actually a PeopleSoft um, solution. Microsoft acquired European uh, ERP company and, and, and rebranded and called it uh, Microsoft Dynamic. Uh, you can find out some information and demo of uh, Microsoft Dynamic. QAD is actually an ERP company located in Santa Barbara. Uh, so it's kind of a local company. Uh, they provide innovative enterprise software and services for global manufacturers. So they target manufacturing firm, particularly automobile parts manufacturer, I believe. Uh, so check it out. This is our neighbor. And Salesforce.com is not really an ERP system, but I want to just point out because uh, Salesforce is a poster child for something called software as a service. SaaS. Uh, and now they sometimes refer to this as a cloud computing, a cloud-based service. And basically, you don't have to purchase a software package and install it on your own internal IT platform or infrastructure. You uh, most of this type of system, like Salesforce, uh, it's web-based um, hosted application over uh, on the cloud. So you just need to pay almost like a rental fee. You get an account, for instance, $60 per person, per user account. Then as long as you have internet connection and web browser, you can get access to the application. Um, Salesforce has been very successful because they target the Salesforce, which initially, they they tend to uh, outside their office running around visit clients so have web access to the system to the client information product information can be very attractive to uh, to the salespeople out there. NetSuite, I believe, is also a uh, SaaS solution. QuickBook is popular for small small uh, companies. And I believe Microsoft has this uh, Accounting Express, which is uh, free download. Uh, if you like to test it out and find out what a um, kind of a little software package may looks like, uh, you're encouraged to give it a try. This diagram is based on Thomas Davenport's HBR article called Putting the Enterprise into the Enterprise System. ERP is considered an enterprise system. Um, but enterprise system can be CRM system, supply chain management system. For instance, um, this portion is really usually considered CRM function, sales, service, and usually account uh, marketing is part of it. 
and some of the back office kind of logistics uh, related um, application um, dealing with supplier is considered supply chain management system and which is probably part of the activity here and traditional ERP um, focus on manufacturing but start to um, to add financial application HR function etc the HR function uh, sometimes will be used by employee directly the reporting kind of function or we, we may actually call it data warehouse business intelligence um, functions uh, in enterprise system um, has become more and more popular and available uh, which will be used by managers uh, in terms of making better decision uh, one last building block in an enterprise system or ERP system is uh, this building block at the center of this diagram which is the central database um, it's a shared database which are uh, shared by all the different modules here we refer to it as application but sometimes we refer um, those different application under the enterprise system modules all those modules share um, a common data data set managed by this centralized database system and this is how we integrate actually various module and processes um, under the ERP system is through the centralized shared database database help us to integrate um, integrate uh, various um, applicational module which allowed us to overcome inefficiency of their um, traditional um, independent systems and the integration is through the integration of data to support multiple uh, business function and processes when you adopt and implement the ERP system um, you may want to limit although they those software can be customized but you do want to limit your customization the reason is it costs you to further customize it uh, secondly is that when the software has an upgrade your customization may not work anymore then which means you have to spend extra money uh, to to recustomize it uh, for the new version another important issue uh, which is the last bullet points here is that we want to use the opportunity for implementing a new ERP system to consider re-engineered um, to consider re-engineering our business processes um, because the ERP package implicitly um, has an underlying business model sometimes we, we call it reference model or blueprint that tends to be uh, a collection of best practice um, from their uh, from various industry implemented in the ERP package so if you find that um, the the underlying reference model is better than your current business processes it may make sense to re-engineer your business processes and, and adapt the one implemented by the ERP package uh, it will save you um, money in terms of less customization and also um, adopting better practices supported by the software in this table <coughs> we compared um, some of the um, information system information architectures components before ERP implementation and then after ERP implementation you may want to look uh, review the slide and and take a closer look um, for instance ERP is more integrated um, we can coordinate across various business function in, uh, we do have integrated data through the common database 
and the, the data has a consistent meaning across multiple function. The maintenance and uh, of the software um, is um, supported by the vendor uh, to some ex extent. Um, and we do provide kind of common interface, um, user interface, etc., across various modules. The system is able to give us more real-time information about inventory products, you name it. And ERP uh, traditional actually first was implemented on mainframe and then moved to a client server environment. More and more, uh, they are web enabled. So um, you can just use a web browser to use uh, uh, Intact with ERP system. And so we're going to close here, uh, close this lecture here. We're going to continue to discuss um, some of the inner working of ERP system and, and some of the implementation issue uh, that we have to deal with in order to achieve uh, a successful implementation of an ERP system. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time.